Howdy, this is Marcus with Velocity Micro. Okay, so let's be honest, man. You don't know how your PC works. You haven't a clue. That's a lie. Okay, let me let me reiterate. I understand that most folks who come to this channel or have their own PC know what things like the CPU, the GPU, the RAM, the PSU, what all those things do. But there are a lot of minutia, especially when it comes to something like the motherboard, which, you know, visually is a very complicated part, uh, that are difficult to understand at first glance. I want to talk about one such part, and it is the voltage regulator module or modules, VRMs. I have a motherboard right here. I'll show you. Um, it's like, they're like right here. Yeah. Those little barrels and cubes. They are like the internal plumbing for your motherboard. They control how much electricity gets doled out to your CPU, your GPU, and you know the rest of your components. Your VRM is not a singular part. It's a series of parts that make up a circuit that dole out the electricity for your components. And each of those parts that make up the VRM have a particular role. Um, I'm just gonna do a head count of them now. The MOSFET, which I'm looking over here because I need to read the actual government name, the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Wow. The MOSFET is really just a gate that opens and closes like an aperture to give the correct amount of voltage to whatever part is asking for. Next is the choke. Uh, the choke takes the 12 volt power that's coming in from the PSU and scales it down to about 1.2, 1.4 volts, whatever the manufacturer specifies, to make it more manageable by the MOSFET. Next, we have the capacitor, a capacitor just like any other capacitor. It temporarily stores the power, doles it out, and then shoots the rest of the ground so nothing gets overloaded. And finally, we have the pulse width modulator. Now, the PWM is a little more sophisticated part because none of the other parts are digital. They're all analog, so there needs to be something that tells them what to do. The PWM is the foreman in this situation. It tells them exactly how to operate. All right, uh, hello. This is Editing Marcus. I know I don't usually do this kind of thing, but providing just a verbal description of what is kind of a complicated electrical component is probably going to go over a lot of people's heads. So I came up with a highly scientific analogy. Um, and in this analogy, soda is electricity, and you, my friend, are the PWM controller. And you look great here, by the way. Beautiful as ever. Um, so you're going up to the soda machine, and the soda machine has a bunch of spouts, which in our example are going to be chokes. Now, the chokes prevent the soda machine from dumping out 12 gallons of McDonald's Sprite onto the floor. Now, you need a way to temporarily store that soda. So you have your cup, your capacitor. I'm sorry, that was... Okay, anyway, um, you take your capacitor and you send pulses to this machine and you get an exact amount of soda. And you're storing that soda and you need a way to get it to the rest of your uh, personal computer. So you use a MOSFET, which would be a straw in this example. And you, once again, the PWM controller, are going to send pulses to this straw, slurping down bit by bit the electricity and sending it to where it needs to be. All right, I think you get it now. This is a perfect, unflawed example. Back to the video. There is a reason why VRMs are important. Not just because they dole out power to your entire motherboard, but because you need to look out for them when it comes to picking a processor versus your motherboard. If you're getting a really big processor, it's going to need a lot of power. And if you get a really small motherboard that does not have a sufficient amount or sort of grade of VRMs, then it won't be able to deliver that power properly. And in doing so, it'll give off heat. And that heat will stop up your CPU, and your CPU will then produce its own heat. And that creates a negative feedback loop that causes your CPU to throttle. Now, this heat over time will also affect the longevity of your parts. It will decrease the lifespan of your CPU, your motherboard, and kind of effectively all of your parts because the heat has to be cast off into the rest of the case. And finally, if you're looking to overclock your CPU, you really need to be looking out for the amount of VRMs that you have because you're going to be pushing more power to your CPU than the manufacturer typically recommends. So you need to have the pathways to do that properly. Now, VRMs are kind of a, a niche statistic that is a little bit harder to find just like on a box or even in the description of some motherboards, but the way that you find it is through the right lingo. So it's usually referred to as power phases or power stages, power solutions, something like that. 
And the reason why it's referred to as that is because while your transistor and your MOSFET are delivering power to your CPU, it does it in these rapid stages via the pulse width modulator. It's just, it's like kind of a zigzag graph. If you just have one VRM, it's a very, you know, rough graph. Not really good for your CPU. It's important that your CPU receives consistent power. And the way to do that is with more VRMs because they add another zigzag to the graph and collectively smooths this graph out and provides a more consistent experience and power delivery for your CPU, allowing to more consistently perform. So that's obviously a lot to think about if you want an overclocked machine. You need to think about the VRMs, you need to think about the motherboard as a whole, your proc, even your PSU. And if you don't really want to do the research, but you would really like that extra power, then you can give us a call with the number on screen or go to the website in the description and we will make you a purpose-built machine right here in the United States, delivered straight to your door to fit exactly your needs. All right, that's all I have. If you like content like this, please do consider subscribing. And this has been Marcus with Velocity Micro. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.